Hello and welcome to October Messy Church. This is in place of our light party, because unfortunately we can't hold our light party this year down at church. Although we will, um, myself and Paul will be down here handing out glow sticks and also you can come down and have a look at our special Jesus pumpkins. So it would be lovely to see you. Right, so we're going to start off with our craft today. And what you will, we're going to make a lighthouse like this. And what you will need for your lighthouse is you'll need two cups. You need a paper cup that you can draw on, and then you need a plastic cup. Now, a plastic cup ideally needs to be able to fit over the top of your paper cup. You will also need some tape. We're going to use red tape, but any colour tape you like, really. You just want to be able to make stripes. You want some sharpie pens. Where do you need any details? A pair of scissors. And then you'll need one of these battery powered tea lights. If you can't get hold of a battery powered tea light, a glow stick will work just as well. So, shall we start? I've also got my son Ellis here, he's going to help us make lighthouses. So, the first thing you need to do is take your two cups. We need to make sure that the clear cup fits, fits over nicely over your cardboard. Which I always do, which is good. What we're going to do first, we're going to decorate our paper cup. Now, lighthouse is generally a striping, aren't they, Ellis? Yep. So, we're going to decorate it with stripes all around our cup. You can do it any colour you like, because they were doing red and white stripes, or it doesn't have to be stripe at all. Perhaps you could put stickers on, or do some drawing on it if you like. Do lots of stripes. That's one stripe. Oh, struggling to find the end of the tape. So you can decorate it whichever, whichever way you like, really. I'm just going to do red and white lighthouse, a bit like the one we can see in Eastbourne over Beachy Head. We've got a red and white lighthouse there, I think we're out at sea, out on the rocks. So all the boats out at sea know where the rocks are. Nice stripy lighthouse. You've got as many stripes as you like, as close together as you like. One more stripe. There we go. So there's my stripy cup. I think Ellis is just finishing off his, so he can join us in a moment. Next, I'm going to do some details, like on this one, because I've got a door and I've got windows on here. So I'm going to grab a sharpie pen or felt tip pen, anything that will work. Yeah, I've got a black one. So I'm going to draw a door. So the lighthouse keeper to go in and be able to check things. And I think I'm going to draw some windows on mine as well. Something lovely and stripy, Ellis. You can add some windows and doors. Yep. You can even add a lot of lighthouses have a bit of fencing going around the top as well, don't they? You could add if you wanted. I'm using sharpie pens today because I say if you wanted to, you could draw on your clear cup as well. If you want to do extra pattern. Just don't decorate the clear cup too much, otherwise you won't be able to see the light through. I think I'm going to do some fencing around the outside of this one. Nice to be back down at church again, doing these films. You can probably hear the Jenny Wren children playing outside. Sounds like they're having a lovely time, doesn't it? So I'm drawing some fencing around the outside of mine. You can do whatever patterns you like. 
so it should look something like that. Now the next thing you will need is your battery power tea light. And if you stick it on the top of your cup where the rim is, and then you can cover it with your lid. And there's your lighthouse. And they look particularly good when it's really dark. So there we go, there's your lighthouses. So I hope you have lots of fun making the lighthouse at home. And, and don't forget, it can be any pattern you like, any colours you like. Make them as elaborate as you like. Well, that's our craft for today. We're moving on next um, for our story, which will be told by myself and Paul. See you shortly. What a terrific idea to make those lighthouses. I'm sure that all yours look fantastic at home as well. Brilliant. And aren't lighthouses so important in our world today? They still are. I've asked Sarah now to help illustrate with me just how important lighthouses are and very often um, on our coast as well. You see, sometimes when a ship is at sea, it can be very dark. And when it's very, very dark, it can also get very stormy at sea and it can get rain and the storms come uh, blowing in from all sides and it can be awful and, and scary to hear it. And not only that, but with the storms and the thunder, you can get lightning flashes in the sky and it's scary as the lights flash and the rain pours down and the ship is on the sea, not very nice at all. And not only that, but also, you can sometimes get the big waves too. And when the big waves come, the water flashes in the sea, out of the sea and covers the boat full of the sea waves. Very scary. And then, of course, the boat is tossed in the sea Everybody gets blown around and it's a very scary time. It's hard to be a risky thing sometimes. And what helps enormously at such times when the boat's on the sea and the storms is when you get a light appearing out of nowhere and the light shows the way to the people. And in the waves and in the storm, in the thundering and the lightning, it's the light from the lighthouse that shows the captain on the boat where safety is to be found. So I've got a lighthouse story. You can see the words Jesus here, all bright and shining. There's a fantastic verse in the Bible that says, Lord, you have brought light to my life. My God, you are the light in my darkness. And Jesus is the light in our darkness. No matter what troubles there are that we can face in the world, God is always with us to be the light in our darkness and to give us courage, to give us strength, to give us peace and to help us to love one another. So you can see Jesus here in the light. And this is our, our church pumpkin with hearts for eyes, a cross for a nose, and a Christian fish symbol for a mouth as well. So we can be thankful to all those who keep us safe, who look after us, and maybe today, especially those who look after us on the sea, the lifeboat crews too. Hello there. Now, I expect, as it's Halloween, I expect a lot of you have enjoyed carving pumpkins. This is a pumpkin that I've carved. Now, I thought um, the food element of Messy Church this time, we would make something out of all the horrid gunky bits that we pull out in the middle of our pumpkins, all the pumpkin flesh that's normally inside. So what I thought we'd make is pumpkin flavoured scones. So this is what you will need. You will need the bits of pumpkin from the centre of your carved out pumpkin, or if you haven't got a pumpkin, even butternut squash would do. And you will need to roast it. Now this I've roasted for about 20 minutes um, in, the, uh, in an oven, just with a tiny bit of oil, um, at the temperature of about 200. And I've got 150 grams of cooked pumpkin. 
You will also need 100 grams of margarine or butter. You'll need 50 grams of caster sugar. You will need 450 grams of self-raising flour. And you will need about 80 millilitres of milk. Well, you might need a little bit more, a little bit less. And lastly, because they're going to be pumpkin spiced scones, you'll need a, a little pinch of um, gram mixed spice and a little pinch of cinnamon. So that's all the ingredients you'll need. Next you'll need a mixing bowl, you'll need a rolling pin, a spatula or spoon, you'll need a fork for mashing up your um, pumpkin, and you'll need a circular cutter for your scones. Now it's up to you the size uh, cutter that you want, it depends on the size scones you fancy making really. So the first thing we need to do is grab a cooked pumpkin like this. And I'm going to take a fork and I'm going to mash it all up as best I can. Or if you particularly wanted to, you could even puree it. But I don't mind having a few little chunky bits of pumpkin, I think it's quite nice in the scones. You need to make sure you've roasted your pumpkin really quite well so that it's easy to mash. Make sure it's all mashed. So it should look a little bit like this. So we'll leave that to one side. But next, you'll want your mixing bowl. And what you want to put in your mixing bowl is all your dry ingredients first. So that's your 450 grams of self raising flour can go in the bowl. Now this recipe will work just as well with gluten-free um, self-raising flour, just as much as ordinary, so you could do it either way. You'll need your 50 grams of caster sugar in the bowl, and you give that a very quick stir. Next, you'll need your bit of spice. Now I'm going to do about half a teaspoon of cinnamon and about half a teaspoon of mixed spice. My dog wants to join me. It's kind of in the background. About half a teaspoon of mixed spice. But it's kind of up to you how spicy you like your um, like your food glue, depends on how much. So you stir the spice in, so it looks a bit like that. So you've got all your dry ingredients in there now. Next, do you want to add all your wet ingredients in? So you want to start off with your butter. To make it easier for mixing, it's quite a good idea to turn your flour and butter into breadcrumbs, which you do with your fingers like this. So you want to rub the butter into your flour and spice and sugary mix. That's it, that's how it resembles breadcrumbs. Now this scone recipe doesn't require any eggs at all. So it's good for people with egg-free diets because the roasted pumpkin gives plenty of moisture instead of needing the use of eggs. Mark the worst of it off with your fingers. Wipe. Next, you need your roasted pumpkin into your mix. Lastly, you need your milk. But just add the milk very gradually, a little bit at a time. So you don't want to end up with really wet scone mixture. 
Now, when I make scones, I find it easier to stir the spatula. But a spoon will do. It's whatever you feel most comfortable with. And you basically want to mix and mix and mix. Keep adding little bits of milk until you've got a nice dough that you can mould with your fingers. So you need to be able to roll it out. A touch more milk. When you've got to a point that it's nearly mixed, you can get your hands in as well, just to finish off the mixing process. I think I'm going to need all my 80 ml of milk, I think. So depending on how moist your butternut squash is, um, your butternut squash or pumpkin is, will depend a little bit on the quantity of milk you need. So if you find yourself needing a little bit more than 80 ml or a little bit less, then that's fine. Right, I'm going to get in there with my hands, I think, and try and bring it all together into a dough. Squish it together. Try and use just your fingertips if you can, otherwise you end up in a bit of a sticky mess. Now this will make quite a few scones depending on the size that you want to make. But once they're cooked they do freeze very well, so though they might only last a few days in an airtight container, they will freeze really, really well. I think we've nearly brought it together. Turn it out onto a floured surface. Find a bit of flour on the surface. And then we can mould it out into scones. So your dough should look a little bit like this. You don't want to over mix your scone mixture because that's when you end up really tough scones. Now I find it easier to just roll out a little bit at a time. I find it a bit easier to work with. In fact you might not even need to roll it, it's up to you. But you want to do it to about that kind of thickness. Then take your choice of cutter. I'm going to do a mixture of big ones and little ones, I think. And you want to cut them out. And then once you've cut, cut them out, but you need to put them on a, onto a baking tray that's lined with greaseproof paper, or I've got one of those silicon um, mats. Oh, it's got a bit squashed. And you just keep doing it until you've run out of dough. With the pumpkin, it's a nice soft scone mixture. So you want to make scones like that. I'll put them on my tray. I shall show you the tray afterwards. So I think I'm going to do a mixture of sizes because I tend to find in my family and friends some prefer a smaller scone, some prefer a slightly larger scone. So I'm going to do a mixture of sizes. I've got Ellis here filming with me as well today. You can say hello, Ellis. Hello. Now, are you, are you fond of a scone, Ellis? Yes. Now, these ones, although they're sweet scones, they're not particularly sweet, so it's up to you what you want to serve them with. You can either serve them um, just with some butter, or the other thing that's quite nice is with a little bit of cream cheese, um, a bit like a Philadelphia cheese or something, but you can add um, a, a, a little pinch of cinnamon to is lovely to go with these. Or you could even have a little bit of grated cheese would work. Right, I'm going to do a few small ones. In fact, if you want them to really be good for this time of year, and for everyone to know that uh, pumpkin scones, you could even use a pumpkin shaped cutter if you've got one. Mixture. So you 
just keep cutting them out until you've got no mixture left. And then also, if you want your scones to be nice and golden on top, and nice shiny glaze, you can spread the tops of them with a bit of beaten egg or a little bit of milk. It'll help make, make them go nice and golden on the top. Right, I think I'm on my last one now. As I've got my Ellis cameraman in the background, Ellis, do you think you could grab me a little bit of um, a little bit of my milk out of the fridge? That'd be great. And I'll find a pastry brush. And I'm gonna these are my scones, all ready for the oven. So I've done a mixture of sizes. So how many I've got? About? I've made twelve. This is a mixture of sizes. So I'm gonna just pop. I'm gonna spread a tiny bit of milk over the top of mine, just to make it nice and golden. But I say if you prefer. If you prefer, you could do a bit of beaten egg, that would be fine. And if you are particularly fond of different spices, you could even top them with a little bit of cinnamon or something. So that's our scones ready for the oven. When they're cooked, they come out a very slight sort of golden orange. Right, that's them ready for the oven. So they need to go in the oven at about 200 centigrade, gas mark 7. And they will probably take about oh, 10 to 12 minutes, which I think will do them. You want to cook them until they're nice golden on the top, and then carefully shut them underneath, and you want them golden underneath as well, and then you'll know they're ready. So I shall come back and show you what they look like when they finish baking. Well, my pumpkin scones, spicy pumpkin scones, are all out the oven now. And I've left them on a cooling rack to cool down. They took about 10-11 um, minutes to cook, even though they were varying sizes. Right, I think I'm going to leave though, these to cool down though and package them up to share with Paul later on. And I think I'm going to do a mixture of cream cheese with a little bit of pinch of cinnamon to have with them. So we're going to finish today's session in prayer. And we've got a pumpkin prayer to share with you. I've carved a pumpkin here with a particular shape on it to make our very happy face. And our prayer to today will talk about the different elements of our pumpkin face. Dear Jesus, Open my mind so that I can learn all about you. Take all my sin and forgive all the wrong that I could do. So that's when you scoop out the insides and you squelch your whole parts of the pumpkin. Open my eyes so your love I will see. You've cut hearts from your eyes. So God's love. I am so sorry for the times that I've turned my nose at what you have given me. So we have cut the nose into the cross. Open my ears so your word I will hear. So we have cut our ears in rectangles to represent the shape of the Bible. Open my mouth to tell others you're near. We've cut our mouth in the shape of fish, the Christian symbol of fish. And let your light shine in all that I say. Lights inside. Amen.